first thing you want is the pivot point wherever your ankle falls inside of the boot and that can be very challenging to find the exact point it needs to be right in the middle of the ski um, I've seen people who ski it forward a little bit maybe a half an inch I've seen people who ski it half a half an inch back depends on their particular style if they're a real weight forward skier they can move it back if they're a real weight back skier they need to move it forward you don't want huge amounts of movement here a half an inch would be excessive quarter inch makes a huge difference on these skis it's just not that long right it's, there's not that much board there longer the ski the more you can mess around with that as far as where to position the back foot usually it's a straight 45 degree angle going across the center line of the ski this is 45 degrees that's the way, way I've set up on this on this one this one you can adjust just a few degrees either direction of 45 generally speaking you want the front and the back as close together as you can. It helps you spin. All right. Basically, it's that whole physics principle of when you bring the mass towards the axis of rotation, you spin faster. All right. There's less momentum to overcome to get a spin. So, if this were way back here, it would probably actually be beneficial for certain tricks because it'd be easier to shift your weight for them. But it would slow down your rate of rotation. And since so many tricks are based on rotation, you want everything in a line as close to the axis of rotation as you can possibly get. So this setup is dead center. Um, it's neither forward nor backwards. Um, this is as close, you can see, the binding plate is as close to the rear toe plate as I can get it without having my big toe hit this plate here. Um, and get used to it. The body pretty well adapts to anything. Um, I've seen people move their bindings around a lot and they can still trick real well. They can still do all kinds of, you know, cool stuff on it. But they're going to be overall a little bit less efficient as keeping all the physics in line and having everything working from a physics standpoint for them. Um, now, this, this one has a hard shell binding on it. Hard shell versus soft shell. Um, simple choice. Hard shell is simply more comfortable for a longer period of time. That's really what it comes down to. Um, I did a lot of the same tricks that I can do now with soft shell boots. Um, didn't make much difference, really, from a performance standpoint. But hard shells make it easier to stay in the boot and on the water for longer periods of time. That's what I've found. This particular hard shell has a removable liner. These are from Intuition Sports. They are heat moldable. You can heat them up in an oven to 200 degrees, slide them into the boot, slide your foot in, Buckle them up, they cool, and they mold to your foot. It gives you a great amount of contact with your foot to the binding. It takes a little adjust adjustment. Most people who I know of who went to hard shells in this fit weren't used to just how fast the reaction was. It's like going from a truck to a Corvette. That just everything happens faster. First couple of times on the water, they usually fall. They're like, wow, everything's so connected here. It's all happening faster. Um, get used to it. You'll adjust. That's no problem to it. Lengths. Um, I started out on a 38 inch trick ski. I weighed 140 pounds. It was too small for me. But I was younger and a uh, pretty lightweight skier. This is a 43. I'm 175 pounds. Most people seem to prefer a 43 inch trick ski, even when you get up to people that are like 200 pounds. Um, I don't know what it is exactly about the length of the ski that is so useful at 43. I skied on a 45 for a little while two years maybe, didn't like it, went back down to 43. Like I said, I've been on a, as short as a 38. 43 just seems to be the sweet spot for some reason with these. Final point on trick skis. This ski, you can see it's got rails in it. These are molded in. Helps the ski track when you're running like this, right? When you're running in the direction of the boat. This very same rail has made it a little harder to break loose and, and go around or do any kind of spins on, the, on water. So, it's kind of a personal preference. I've skied on both, flat with rails and not. Um, rails, for me, make the ski more stable. I'm more likely to make a trick if I'm a little off because the ski wants to track into a straight position for me. So, safety factor. For years I was on a good ski, it was dead flat on the bottom, and you had to land your tricks perfectly. You had to have the alignment right when you hit the water, otherwise the ski was not forgiving and wanted to slide out on you. Particularly for line tricks, it was it was challenging to get those right again. I sort of had to relearn the trick for that. Um, so I recommend rails and uh, edges. This is a hard edge ski, um, which means the fiberglass goes right to the edge of the ski. Hard edge skis will set a better edge. 
Unfortunately, in tricks, a better edge is oftentimes not what you want. More edge at the wake can be your worst problem. Um, we'll talk about edge and load on the line and so forth. Hard edge ski means you got to just be more gentle for your wake tricks. But hard edge ski is usually a better trick for flips, where you are really trying to generate angle against the against the wake. Um, most people who do toe tricks use a rubber edge ski for that very reason. They don't want to generate much angle against the wake, and a rubber edge ski, ski will not set as hard as hard an edge, and it will not hold as an edge as long. It'll deflect a little bit, which gives them a little softer entry into the wake.